Hello! And, <laughs> and welcome uh, to what episode? Episode 7. Episode 7? Seven, 7 of the Young Performers Podcast. Oh, no. This, no. This, is sound. this is definitely episode 8. Welcome to episode 8 of the... <laughs> I'm going to check now. Is this episode 9? I've got it here. Hang on. This is yeah, episode 8. I'll leave it blank. Episode... Oh, okay. um, welcome to episode 7 of the... <laughs> um, so this is why... Actually, I'm saying... Okay, so let's do that again. Hello! And welcome to uh, episode 8 of the Young Performers Podcast, So What Next? Uh, thank you everyone for tuning in for the last few weeks. Uh, thank you in for everyone for tuning in to Dan's sound. It was wonderful to interview him. Um, however, guys, we have a very, very exciting host, which I have been looking forward to for a while. I finally managed to get uh, sorted and pinned down. Um, introducing one of my favourite uh, teachers ever, uh, the wonderful Lynn Thomas. Uh, thank you so Hello. much for being here today. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, so, um, as we do with everyone, we're just going to start yeah. way from the beginning. Um, okay. And I just want to ask you, uh, what made you first want to be a dancer? Um, when I was very small, uh, my mum took me to dance class, at ballet. I think I was probably about three. She never kind of forced me into it. I just loved it. And then I did Scottish country dancing. Oh. Um, and did a few exams in that. But then I carried on with ballet, uh, modern and tap. Modern being like jazz um, rather than contemporary. Then I moved to a different dance school and it was from then with, with a new teacher that had taken over that I absolutely loved it. Um, mm. was dancing every night after school. Don't know how I did my homework, but I must have done it somehow because I <laughs> went through school fine. Um, but yeah, I just loved it. I loved mm. dancing. I did tap, ballet, um, everything. Every night. Must have cost my uh, parents <laughs> a fortune. But yeah, I just loved love performing I wouldn't say I was like confident but in in the dance studio it was just mm. my little world and awesome. so yeah what, I loved it so like what ages did you start each individual uh, dance I think have... pretty much all at the same time oh, um, right, so right. like you do your sort of grade one bad well probably starts like pre-primary ballet and then you do your pre-primary modern and tap so you, mm. they were the main um, disciplines I did to start with any sort of take exams progress up mm. Then I started doing classical Greek. Um, when I changed to my um, dance school that I trained at most of my life before going to college, um, they didn't do Scottish, so I oh. only did that for a, a few years. So yeah, pretty much from the age of sort of three to mm. sixteen, and then on so to college. So you went to a specific dance school for your you know, your childhood instead of um, yeah. I went to so I went to normal school in the day. Mm. Um, um, and then I went to Hilton Dance Studios oh. in Sandstead. Oh. Fabulous. I had a fabulous teacher who was really strict. Um, and I think I quite like that. I quite mm. like sort of um, that discipline. Yeah. And I think I, I wasn't very good actually at the beginning. Probably until <laughs> about 11 I was always uh, okay. And there were girls in my class who were better. And then I think it was about 11, 12. I suddenly flourish, so we say. <laughs> and I've actually, it's a funny picture. My sister's five years younger and she's doing like this tondu, like a point of her foot, mm. all beautifully turned out, lovely hands. And there's me, five years older, sickled foot, funny hands. I think, <laughs> oh. And then I think from that moment on, then I mm. then sort of progressed and became um, better. And mm. yeah, then went on to sort of win competitions and yeah. my so, flourishing uh, moment. <laughs> so growing up, did you have like a favourite style of dance or was it all do you know I really I really liked ballet oh. um, but ballet is such a hard um, a hard discipline and a hard sort of career mm. um, and very but and also because I love jazz as well and tap um, I didn't want to sort of specialize mm. too much yeah. and at that young age I didn't know before I went to college what I would um, improve at you yeah. know, kind of what path I really would want to go down. But I really love ballet, um, sort of lyrical jazz, like softer, um, floatier jazz. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when I was training younger, hip hop wasn't really around. Mm. It's called like funky jazz. <laughs> um, whereas now it's like full on yeah. hip hop. Um, 
but I'd love to be able to do that stuff because yeah. I see that I think wow um, so I wish that kind of training had been around mm. more when I was um, training yeah did it actually answer your question no it did I, I, had, <laughs> I forgot I had a question that I had in my head and I completely forgot what it was um, that was the only thing about hip hop <laughs> um, uh, oh gosh what was it um, come back to it yeah I'm sure it'll come back oh no that was it so yeah so you mentioned how uh, ballet was a very hard career like what was it specifically can you think of that maybe um, put you off I wouldn't say put me off oh, yeah. um, up until I went to college I, I loved ballet um, then I went to college and I really thought I was in like the top group ballet what mm. they call the classical group um, this was at London Studio Centre now and I thought this is it I want to do I really want to do ballet ballet I love it um, but then I had an amazing tap teacher and an amazing jazz teacher and I thought oh I like that too and they kind of advised me they were like you know you've, you've got all these disciplines that you're um, not sounding big headed but you, you can do and you're good at don't channel yourself into mm. into one um, and I thought actually yeah like I love musical theatre and singing as well so yeah. awesome yeah um, and I'm glad I did um, I'm glad I did that now so what was your first memory of kind of performing on stage in front of people, not just doing the classes in the studios? My and stuff? first memory of performing is probably doing dance festivals, okay. which are dance competitions. Mm. Um, and I think I did my first one at about seven years old. Mm. And although you can do them from little, mm. but I don't think I had the confidence or the, the mm. technique. <laughs> um, and I remember doing a Mexican hat dance to La Cucaracha and my mum and maybe this like um, sort of pink tie up uh, thing around your boobs and I had a big Mexican sombrero and I kept popping out not that you can see me I'm dancing here but um, I kept popping out from behind the hat um, so yeah and then I didn't re really get any good marks I was always like ooh um, and it took a few years of doing dance festivals doing more dance solos to really um really progress and then really start sort of winning dance competitions but I think that's my my memory of mm. doing dance festivals yeah um, <laughs> so at what point did you make the switch from performing and being a dancer to teaching and that side of your career uh, so at at London Studio Centre probably in my third year I think uh, actually in my second year we did a lot of um, we did choreography classes and I loved um, interpreting music in unusual ways. I loved making up stories. And there was a group called Pulsate, which was like a. Um, sorry, can I start again? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was um, like, uh, let me get the facts right before someone goes, she said. Um, okay, the switch. Can I carry on? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, I loved choreography, even from a young age, actually. In going back to dance festivals, there used to be a choreography section where you could make up your own um, dance, any piece of music, and I always had a story. And funnily enough, I'd always choose like a comedic story. Mm. Um, I like making people laugh with dance. Um, I didn't want to just do like a normal dance, a piece of music, kind of boring. I always had to be different I suppose <laughs> then at college I did a lot of choreography work in groups solos um, so I always kind of like like that side of it I did my sort of teaching exams whilst I was training um, at London Studio Centre um, in Tapper Modern so there was always kind of that element I quite liked mm. um, and then I was asked to teach a few classes there um, sort of covering teachers I remember doing a few tap classes there in particular. Yeah, then obviously went on to dance professionally. But then even in between sort of professional jobs, I would always come back and do yeah. teaching. And I taught at my local dance school, the one I trained at from a young age, plus London Studio Centre in between performing jobs. So, I mean, what was it like to first start off teaching? I mean, where did you begin? I mean, I know personally the kind of the idea of teaching it always feels kind of appealing at first, but I'm always like, where will I start? Like, did you? Yeah, it's quite daunting. Like, Even after like a, a, a summer break or a holiday, you go back and think, oh, hang on, I've got to get back <laughs> into my uh, teaching mode. Um, I think it's something that you have naturally. Mm. 
and it's the want to make that person do better mm. and for me it's seeing people week after week improve and actually mm. listen to what you're saying yeah. and you think ah oh, they have listened they have improved <laughs> uh, so yeah I suppose getting into it I would I did assist my dance teacher at my um, local dance school uh, sort of watching her teach and be like an assistant to the really little yeah. the little sort of baby um, sort of toddler group and, and watch how she taught then I would rehearse I remember when I was younger rehearsing kids festival dances as like sort of a one on one tuition so they'd show me their dance and I'd say okay when you do that bit you need to mm. stretch or elongate more or jump higher on that bit or make sure that bit's cleaner or neater so I suppose then you get an eye for, um, and also your training helps because you know what, yeah. what looks right and what doesn't. Yeah. Um, but it's it's a, I, I know I find um, c- counting things. I always have to have like beat and counts, and some music is like <gasps> a bit like West Side Story when I choreograph that. Oh, oh my gosh, some bits my brain. I was like, <laughs> um, but yeah, you've got to have the confidence in being able to count out the rhythm and mm. um, and being able to conduct a class. Because yeah. you are in charge, and that everyone's looking up to you, thinking you're the one that knows the best. <laughs> yeah. So you've got to, um, yeah, the confidence yeah. as well. Awesome. So um, you were um, a few years ago in the producers on the West End. Yes, I was. I was wondering if you could tell me what the uh, the audition process was like for that. Like, how many dance schools did you have to do? And all that oh, that was is an interesting story. This one, um, I auditioned. Um, Trying to think the first, I auditioned twice actually. The first time I auditioned, I did one dance call, a singing call, another dance call, and then I didn't hear. And I thought, oh. Uh, then I found out a friend of mine had been offered a part. So I, obviously, you don't hear. Sometimes you hear no, but other times you don't hear anything, and you just mm. presume, okay, that wasn't meant yeah. to be. Um, and I was gutted because yeah. I'd seen the show in the West End. I was like, I love it. Um, it still is one of my favourite shows. Mm-hmm. Then my husband was working as a cruise director on a cruise ship and I went out for Christmas and New Year and we were sailing around Mexico and then I got a phone call to say, uh, Lynn, can you come back um, or can you come on audition for producers again? And I was like, oh, I'm <laughs> in Mexico, oh my gosh. So I was like, yes, because I was like, well, drop everything, <laughs> yeah. that's fine. I'm coming back on that plane. Mm-hmm. Cost me a fortune, um, flew back, Christmas Day so I I think I left um, America on Christmas Eve overnight flight Christmas morning Mm. arrive at Heathrow Airport (laughs) and uh, because the audition was the day after Boxing Day Mm. came home to my family and everyone had a sick bug (laughs) (laughs) this is a true story I get home everyone's sick and I'm like I can't get sick and the first immediate thought was I'm going to go sleep in the car because I don't want to catch because it's an audition I've flown back to the other side of the world to do this yeah. and uh, one of the particular requirements was for me to be able to do fuetes like a mm. uh, fuete turns so I remember uh, so then Christmas happened well that was a very uh, <laughs> very memorable in all for the wrong reasons Christmas um, then I remember Boxing Day everybody being in bed still ill I then decided to go to the gym and practice my fuetes <laughs> and that night I remember feeling really sick and I thought oh no my audition's the next day mm. I thought I'm not going to be sick I'm not going to be sick and um, I remember doing the audition the next day having not eaten feeling awful mm. and had to then um, do the dance call had to do tap and I was filmed because the choreographer Susan Stroman who was in the States mm. and I had to be filmed doing this tap uh, routine. Then I had to do fuetes. <laughs> then I had to sing. Um, I think I sang a couple of songs. Yeah. And then they said, "Oh, thank you very much. You can. You're free to go." So I was like, "Oh, great." Um, mm-hmm. I wish that I hadn't felt so sick, but obviously. Yeah. Um, then I phoned. I think I phoned um, casting director and said, "Am I free to go back to the cruise ship? You're not going to mm-hmm. then suddenly call me in the yeah. next day." And they said, "Yeah, you're free to go." Yeah. So then I flew back on New Year's Eve and my plane caught fire. <laughs> this is the truth. So we, we, Heathrow, it was New Year's Eve. I think it was the day before New Year's Eve. Uh, we were half up there, all smoke was coming down the aisle. I was like, oh, we're on fire. So emergency landing back at Heathrow. Um, got my luggage, soaking wet. It was the air conditioning that caught fire. 
they put us up overnight in a hotel. Eventually, the next morning, because mm. I'm, I know I'm rambling on now. Um, <laughs> my um, <laughs> eventually, um, the flight took off, and because I was panicked, so I knew I had to catch a cruise ship. And if I landed, um, before you know, if the ship had gone when I'd landed, mm. then I would be stuck in LA for a week, not being able to catch up with the ship. But I did land in time and then spent New Year's Eve try, or, you know, trying to stay awake for midnight. Um, then I heard the next day that I'd got the job or the day oh, after. Brilliant. So yes, it was all worth it. <laughs> then I remember phoning some friends, oh, I've got off the job, yeah, yeah. And then I got a phone call back from um, the resident director saying, uh, but don't tell anyone yet, Lynn. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, it was totally worth it yeah. in the end. Brilliant. Um, so, that's great. <laughs> that's amazing. That can be the quote of the episode, like, and then the plane caught fire. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so, uh, so over the course of your career, I imagine you did many kind of dance schools and many auditions. Yeah. Uh, so, so we've all, we've all seen Chorus Line. Um, oh yes. We've all, we've all uh, uh, kind of seen what uh, kind of artistically the dance school is presented as. How accurate is that? Like, what are from your experience anyway? How far um, been like? I've done auditions where literally you've been mainly open auditions where you've been crammed into a room and you're trying to dance at the wall you can't see the choreographer mm. and then you get called into groups and you're like oh I haven't actually danced this properly fill out because I haven't had the space mm. um, I particularly remember that was a particular panto audition where there was actually no space and I remember even when my group got called I was up against the one I had to do a leap and I remember just putting my foot and kicking the wall and thinking well this is great mm. I can't um do that but having said that if you're called in private audition mm. then you have the space you have the time yeah. so it just depends on the type of audition yeah. um, and I've done a lot of like commercial auditions um, for agencies they tend to be uh, you're kind of everybody in and because they're going for a particular look mm. they often kind of know from you know from when you yeah. first start oh yeah we've got somebody that looks like that on our books so we don't want you mm. um, but yeah, it, it can be, it, you know, you do have your panel there and you are sort of in lines, sometimes with numbers, but generally not, generally alphabetical order. Mm. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. so it, can, it can be a bit like that. Yeah, but um, it's not as uh, kind of, what's the word? Uh, there's no word. Um. Uh, yeah, I've done auditions <laughs> where we've been on the stage, so yeah. therefore you do feel a bit like chorusy line. Yeah. Um, but it's um you are in groups of like four or five um and you are able to you know yeah. they do tend to switch the lines and um but for learning a dance routine yes it can be like oh get to the front because yeah. then you're seen right from the beginning yeah. and you can see you know clear with a choreographer but um it's yeah. not quite as what are your like top tips or how to cope with <clears throat> a dance school i mean how to cope with, uh, one of my top tips would be um, leave your bag at, near the door because um, okay. if you get cut then you haven't got to walk across everybody to get your bag and then walk <laughs> back across everyone to go out so um, make sure you're really warm hmm. because often you can get cold if, you're, if your surname's near the end of the alphabet being T yeah. Thomas often you'd wait around and say, Ooh. so make sure you're really warm um, and you keep warm whilst you're sort of waiting to yeah. to dance otherwise nothing worse than it start with a big whack kick or splits or something that's like ah yeah. um that so, would um, be are the, are the kind of the dances you have to do in these dance schools ever really challenging or are they usually yes they, they can be challenging because you're nervous so then again yeah. that's a um that's what makes it sort of harder as well because you're trying to perform plus remember the routine and obviously do your best it can be it is it, I, I used to find it sort of quite quite nerve-wracking um some of them are challenging it depends on the show mm. uh depends sort of yeah on the style mm. but yeah the, often they'll pick little uh, snippets from the show to teach you mm. so sometimes you can already learn the routine before or yeah. have an idea That's of cool. what it's um which is good but then you've really got to listen to the choreographer because yeah. they could change things slightly and then if you're not listening so it's all attention to detail as well yeah okay which they'll probably be looking for Brilliant. okay so you've uh, worked as a dancer on cruise ships before. yes yeah um so i was wondering uh what did you find the differences were between working on a cruise ship and working in the theater and kind of working at west end 
Uh, the dip. Uh, that's not over. Yeah. One thing that I did uh, notice, or I found really hard to sort of change at first, was when you're doing when you're working dancing on the cruise ships. Um, obviously, you have sort of about four or five shows, about four or five sort of fifty minute to an hour shows um, per sort of cruise or per week or per ten mm. days. So it's a lot of material to learn. Plus, you have to maintain your costumes, maintain your wigs. Um, so is it like five different sets. shows? For, yeah. So, okay. I, I mean, I think one ship I did, we had like seven different shows, I think. It depends on the length of the cruise. If you've got like a 14-day cruise, the passengers are going to want to see more shows. Yeah. Whereas in a week cruise, you can't yeah. sort of fit in 14 shows. So you yeah. do like four, four or five. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, maintaining costumes, sewing holes um <laughs> cleaning um maintaining your wigs pre-setting all your your costumes and shows yeah. shows shoes uh for the top of the show so mm. that would be my responsibility so okay. in the show if i went off to get changed ah, i haven't set my shoes yeah it's your fault whereas um in the theater i found that well, i said address i had a dresser i was like wow this is amazing <laughs> and then i would you know and she said trust me lynn i know exactly but i'd yeah. kind of think oh but then i don't so I've, you know mm. you've got to 100 percent trust your dresser and i had an amazing dresser and producers called helen um, who actually then worked at central oh, um so yeah and then obviously then you have a whole wig department that's mm. responsible for your wigs so it's kind of all there and i i yeah. love that um but then i also liked um you know, looking after my own wigs and costumes. Yeah. I quite like that. Awesome. Um, so, I mean, uh, it's like, it's doing a, when you're on a cruise, is it like, it, the experience outside of doing the shows, is it like being on the cruise, but with a few shows chucked in? Or are you are you working? Um, well, for me, it depends on cruise line company. So I work for Princess Cruises, which is an American company, who are amazing. The show's uh, we had some shows choreographed by Karen Bruce, who does a lot of work in the West End. So her, her shows in particular were amazing to dance. Um, and the sets are amazing. We had like lifts, so it was like three level lifts on the stage. So the shows are quite hard because you're dancing full out yeah. pretty much for that 50 minutes. Whereas yeah. in theatre show, you could be on stage for like five and then a little break. Yeah. So you are dancing full out for that time. And then after the show, for us, for dancers on Princess, it was, we were lucky. Um, I think things have changed nowadays for that company, but when, back in the day, um, when I was younger, uh, we were pretty much treated as passengers. You had to be respectful, so you couldn't be in big groups of people. Mm. But we could go to the bars, we could go to the restaurants if they weren't busy, mm. and we could walk around passenger areas. Mm. Um, we'd have to wear name badges so that okay. people would know, but we could we didn't have uniform then you as long as you dressed mm. there was like certain dress codes for each evening so we were mm. really lucky Brilliant. um and i loved that i loved seeing the world mm. and then like being on a beach in the morning sunbathing oh, then coming back and doing my show um so you get i to did leave love the boat it every destination you could leave the boat yeah. uh, you could leave the ship when we docked yeah, yeah. obviously not at sea cause my yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah when we docked we, we could um, yeah. it was hard to save money though because if you're in different ports oh, I want to go and see this I want to do the yeah. sort of t the tours and so is, is all, are all your kind of expenses covered while on the ship but once you leave uh, no. no you have a bar bill which you'd have like <laughs> a special card so you could actually the crew bar you'd have a bar bill and you had a, a special account with um uh, a numbered account that you would sign so you wouldn't have to have mm. sort of cash um, dollars mm. really but then at the end of the month you'd get like your like a credit card bill ah! <laughs> so then you'll wait and then that's what that was on payday so often oh. like you'd see your wages go from your wage uh, <laughs> your wage envelope to your bar bill um, but yeah we were we were really lucky awesome um, in those days it was it was good life but then you'd get like a lot of jealous um, other staff thinking oh dancers they only do the show in the evening oh, okay. I think but then you have to have all that training yeah. to be able to do to mm. do that show um, I'm not saying they didn't have training to do their jobs but yeah um, you know yeah um, we did work hard harder than most people thought <laughs> um, right so you are now uh, uh, you, you do a lot of teaching and choreography 
Um, what is your favourite style to teach? What are your, your favourite classes to teach? Uh, challenging wise, tap. Hmm. Um, because at the moment we've got like two, at uh, uh, Royal Central, we've got two tap uh, levels and it's hard to teach tap because I've got some beginners and some sort of more advanced. But I find that I love that challenge hmm. and seeing people that have never put on tap shoes hmm. and then by the end of the term being able to. Um, you know, do your time step. So the drama school that you're currently teaching at, it's more of a, uh, it's less of a, the course you teach on is less kind of known as a musical theatre course, it's more an acting course with musical theatre elements. So have you found there to be a big difference in teaching actors versus teaching dancers? Yes uh, and no. Um, mm. I love, I absolutely love teaching actors. Mm. Uh, I find they really give, they give more uh, and they're not so, um, what's the word? Um, I'm up to pause here whilst I think of a word. <laughs> not so, what's the word? Uh, oh my gosh. So I think when I teach the dance, they're so. God, I've actually gone blank. They worry about how they look and how it, whereas the actors. Self conscious or? That's the word. Self-conscious. Let's go back. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I find that um, actors are less self-conscious than dancers. Yeah. And I think maybe because some of the actors haven't done dance before, and even though they might inside feel really oh, mm. nervous and, oh my God, what what is this? They're just more open. Mm. Um, just so more open and more giving. And you can really get a lot out of the actors. Um mm. And it is nice to train people right from the beginning all the way through. Mm. So, yeah, I love teaching the dancers too, um, but I find actors yeah. to give that a little bit more. So, so let's just give it a pause for the ambulance to go off. So what do you find when you're teaching is the difference between a student that is an absolute pleasure to teach and a student that <laughs> maybe you have difficulties with and maybe uh, you find frustrating. What makes a, a just a student that's lovely to teach, regardless of their um, uh, dance experience? Just um... I think it's listening. Um, mm. If a student, even if they, it doesn't, for me, it doesn't matter, you know, at the beginning they can't do like a, a step leap or they can't do the splits, that's not the end of the world. But if they listen and they're willing to try and they push themselves to their limits, and they improve themselves from what they were at the beginning, that to me is is amazing. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's the listening. I'm like, please listen. <laughs> uh, and sort of being able to copy and have an eye for, for detail as well. So those that are more advanced, then I want to sort of push, um, adding in the extra turn, mm. improving the flexibility and real attention to detail. Mm. Cool. Um, Did that make sense? Yeah, yeah. it does. So, uh, when you're on the course uh, auditioning kind of prospective students, uh, what do you find, what, what, do you, what, do you, what are you looking for kind of in the auditions? Well, what, uh, wh what makes a student for you stand, uh, or a prospective student stand out in the application? Dance-wise. Yeah, or during the dance Dance-wise. Someone that's uh, not shy, willing to throw themselves into um, the routine, again, not being self-conscious, Someone that obviously has rhythm. Um, we're not looking for like perfectly uh, formed technique. Someone that we think, ah, oh, we, we, I can really mould that person. I can really um, sort of shape that person. And someone with a bit of character, a little bit of spark of something unusual, yeah. shall we say? <laughs> yeah, I do get them at the end of the set routine to do like an improvisation. Oh yeah. So we set. <laughs> uh, so we give like a scenario, like in a bar. I think was the last one I did where they guys had to get the girls up to dance um, obviously with, with that music but on yeah. that particular um, on that improv section I don't necessarily want to see backflips you know, <laughs> quadruple pirouette splits I want to see them interpreting the music yeah. how they feel yeah. um, and then also we see the, the acting side come through and mm. yeah awesome um, so how much when, when you're auditioning uh how much of an impact does the dance school would you say have on the final decision uh, for anyone who's applying for drama school at the moment? Like, 
so for example I know some people don't have don't they can't make the dance school but they still may be offered a place how big of a deciding factor have you found the dance school to be it's it's really interesting it really sort of opens up and you can really sort of see uh so it's a bit like an interview I find you can really kind of see their personality mm. for me um shine through more um at am I allowed to say central yeah okay sorry um yeah so at Royal Central uh we do in the first round I do the um mixed workshop so we do a little bit of movement a little bit of collaborative work and we see you know see their speeches and we sort of work with them so we don't kind of see the speech thank you we yeah. kind of um, work and see how they can change and we do a little bit of movement to make sure they haven't got two left feet <laughs> yeah. um, and they're like physically they're able and bodily wise um, and rhythmically wise they're capable then in the final audition so they'll have a, like a, one recall and then in the final audition we do like a dance routine Mm. Um, so you know that's pretty important because yeah. then you may have someone that's amazing at amazing singer and then they come to the dance it's like ooh um, yeah. but they might come to the dance and I think oh no they're not they haven't got the technique there yet but mm. I can we can yeah. um, improve that and shape them awesome wonderful and because dance is so um, they do a lot of dance on the course it's important that they they can yeah. move <laughs> yeah so how much weight do you think uh, being able to dance carries in the industry now like com is it more important than it was before is it less so is it just as um... I think that um, it does depend on the show but I think it's equal singing acting mm. dancing mm. as a as a package now mm. um, Whereas I think when I was sort of first starting out, it's yeah, it's it's a tricky it's a tricky yeah. question. It it totally depends on the show. Obviously, if you've got like a chorus line, you need to be able to mm. to dance. But then you've got to be able to sing. You've got to act that part. So mm. I would say, in musical theatre, all three. Um, mm. If it's a dancey show, all three um, are equal mm. because you might be able to kick, pirouette, be an amazing dancer. But if you're not telling the story as that person, yeah. you think what, and you, and you can't sing it as that person, um, then the whole it's not it's not going to work. Mm. Um, but obviously there are dancey based dancey shows where there's no singing, um, it's just pure sort of dance. Then obviously then dance would be you know important. But I'd say all three. Mm. So for so for anyone out there who um, maybe later on in their life has never done any dance before and they suddenly they just watched Sing in the Rain and they're now inspired um, and they've suddenly developed this new love for dance would you say like, and they have a fear maybe it's too late you know to get into it what advice would you give to people who maybe later on want to start out now but they might be worried it's a bit too late where, where could they start where should they start what well, start to then go to college to perhaps maybe develop or... uh, that discipline I would take dance classes um and be very particular about what classes you take because the teacher can either inspire you or or not. So if you've seen this amazing production of Singing in the Rain and you go to like a local dance class and yeah. the teacher's not quite as inspiring, then you're kind of... Um, so go to like your big um, sort of pineapple, your dance works, mm. your uh, dance attic type places where they have uh, good classes for all levels and you kind of get a buzz for the atmosphere of, for how it is. And, and you'll either then decide, oh yes, actually... Um, this is for me and then you can compare yourself to other people yeah and then you'll know actually no I don't think I've I've, yeah. I've got this or yeah I really want to um, yeah. pursue this yeah um, okay um, sorry um, these now questions are going to be a bit jumpy back and forth given the nature of how um, I forgot to ask them earlier so sorry for the sudden subject change but going back to um, earlier when we were talking about auditions what has been your best audition ever and what has been your worst <laughs> audition ever? Oh, uh, my best audition would have to be um, probably the producers because I actually got mm. offered the job. Um, <laughs> and um, I was on my own in that audition. 
Oh, so it was even more nerve wracking, but mm. ultimately they, they were just focused on you. Mm. So that's probably um, my best audition. My worst audition, oh, there's quite a few of those, um, <laughs> probably be uh, Phantom of the Opera. Okay. <laughs> when I pretended I was shorter than I was. <laughs> and it was ballet, she had to be five foot six, and I'm five foot eight, and I changed my CV. Um, <laughs> And we, I think we'd done one dance call and then we did some point work and we were on the stage at the, it, uh, well, I can't remember the theatre it was on, Her that Majesty's, one. that yeah. one. Um, <laughs> and there was a little bit of a rake, I seem to remember. And we had to do like this Chene, uh poster tone combination from the corner and finish lovely at the end in the corner in twos, I think it was. And I just couldn't stop uh, doing chenets because obviously being on a rake and being on audition you're nervous and you've just learned the combination I thought the best bet is just to carry on into the wings so that nobody nobody sees the crash so my I th- girl I was dancing is literally finished lovely and I was like um, <laughs> straight off stage that's probably my worst um, trying to think of other good auditions good auditions um, probably my first a job that I actually took for Princess Cruises that was a really good audition because I hadn't been auditioning long and people kept getting cut and when I was still there and then they cut again <laughs> and I was still there and then I was like yeah and then I think there was only like two of us one or two of us that actually mm. got right down um, out and that was an open call mm. so that to me was like yes mm. so um, is that a common industry practice the um, you have a big group and still it gets cut down yeah okay. so you, you'll, you'll get cut and You'll, you'll then repeat the routine or they might teach you a little bit more or they'll teach you something different or they'll say right cut now or, let's hear you sing mm. and then you sing and then you come back to dance again so it all depends on the yeah. number of people leaving the show yeah. and the number of places mm. um, nah, yeah. Ooh. Um, okay so so uh, one last question before we move on uh, if you were not a dancer choreographer teacher um, yep. etc what else do you think you might be? You probably have a proper job, <laughs> <laughs> a normal job. Um, I'd always loved like forensics, and I not that I'm good at science at all, um, but in watching like CSI yeah. and those things, I just think I'd love to be able to like, you know, dust off the fingerprints and yeah. work out or oh, who killed that person there or yeah. kind of a kind of a creepy mind. But I would just um, yeah. that's something I'd love. Um, I couldn't be like sat in an office yeah. doing looking at a computer screen. I'd have to be out there doing um, yeah. solving crimes and yeah, yeah, that, that's what I love. <laughs> Jesse onto the crime scene. Jesse yeah. pirouette <laughs> dust. There we are. <laughs> well, I mean, it hasn't been made yet. The um, the Sherlock Ballet. Uh, you should be the. Oh uh, yes, that's a good one. That's a uh, yeah. choreograph. I'll choreograph that. Oh, right. The CSI yeah. tap. Um, yeah, CSI. Yes, yes, <laughs> Um, X Files. <laughs> I love the X Files. Oh, X Files, the the musical. A few aliens dancing. I bet that's been done. The X Files hip hop show. X Files hip hop. Aliens hip hop dance down the in their files. spaceship. Um, anyway, right. um, so I'm gonna quickly have a few uh, quick fire questions, just a bit of fun that we have with all our guests. Ooh. So answer these as quickly as you can. Okay. Right. Cats or dogs? Cats. Uh, favourite comfort food? Chocolate. Ideal holiday location? Florida. Uh, favourite word? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the first word I could think of. <laughs> Least favourite word? Boo. It's <laughs> very <laughs> theatrical, isn't it? Hello and boo. I love it. <laughs> um, least favourite food? Tomatoes. Oh, okay. Uh, dirty dancing or Mamma Mia? Now be careful, you have students in both. Um, <laughs> Uh, that's a tricky one. Mm. Mamma mia. Okay. <laughs> uh, Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones? Lord of the Rings. Okay. Uh, fav- <laughs> favourite just... swear word? Oh, see, I'm not really a swear uh, mm. Probably... Shit. <laughs> um, favourite... Well, what superhero... What superpower would you have? Flying. Awesome. So, Lynn, last question of the show. Uh, the title of the show. So, what next? 
<laughs> oh, I'll answer what next. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what next is... I should really clarify um, that question before the interview, because it, it, it's not the first time... I thought I was, I was waiting for music yeah. to start or some kind of thing to happen. <laughs> that gets added in post. Post, yeah. Well, um, <laughs> so, yeah, so, so uh, what next? Well, um, continuing with uh, Royal Central School of Speech and Drama, mm-hmm. teaching first, second years, and third years. And then next year... I'm choreographing Grand Hotel Wonderful. for Central awesome. in, the, in the spring term. So that's my next kind of big project. Yeah. Uh, but I also teach, I don't think I said this, but I teach um, in Wimbledon at a stagecoach on Friday nights and Saturdays and we're doing Singing in the Rain ah. next uh, next term too. So a bit of Singing in the Rain and a bit of Grand Hotel. Brilliant. Awesome. Well, Lynn, thank you so much. Thanks so much <laughs> thank for coming to the show. It has been an absolute joy. Um, lovely thank you if there's anything any details we will put them uh, in the description below for you if there's any like your, your dance class in Wimbledon we'll uh, put that below <laughs> oh, they're, li- they're, is it, um, they're little kids so it's even so um, <laughs> if you have youngins if you have youngins out there Stagecoach Wimbledon <laughs> uh, Stagecoach Wimbledon um, Sienna thanks so much for being on the show and thank you everyone for tuning in uh, yet again to listen to this uh, glorious woman um, so yeah guys uh, please come back next week for a very exciting interview. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. See you later. Bye. Thanks everyone for tuning in again this week to So What Next, the Young Performers Podcast. If you liked Lynn, have a check for her links in the description below. As always, make sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and check us out on social media. And if you're looking for a previous episode, click the annotation in the top corner. Remember to tune back in next week for another cool episode of So What's Next.